a federal judge has ruled that FBI does not need to get a warrant in order to put a GPS tracking device on your vehicle. So they don't need to tell you, well obviously they wouldn't tell you about it, but they wouldn't need to get a warrant. Um, all they have to do is uh, think that something you're doing is suspicious enough to put the device on your vehicle and it's fine. So well, that makes sense. It's not like we have a constitution anymore. We can violate the constitution 18 different ways. I mean they could do warrantless uh, wiretapping, so if they can wiretap you and listen in on all your conversations and read all your emails without getting a court order, without having any really any reason other than they write themselves a letter, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saying, yeah, I'd like to investigate that guy. I think it makes sense. This if, is if they can do that, can they not track where your car is going? Of course they can, because there's no rules left anymore. There's no laws, there's no constitution. So Fourth Amendment, what name so? This is a perfect Gone. example of the slippery slope argument because it's the slippery slope argument at play, right? It's exactly what's happening right here. Because at first you have people in government saying, no, 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 we need to do this because it's a national security concern. Yes. Except it's never used with national security threats ever. In fact, this particular case had to do with a St. Louis trip employee in the treasurer's office, right? Who that was they obviously part of Al-Qaeda, right? <laughs> no, not, of course really, not. Really, it's not. Huh? They were thinking, maybe this guy is stealing some money, okay? Maybe he might be doing wire fraud, so we want to investigate him. So the FBI put a GPS tracking device on his vehicle. You really, you can't investigate in other ways. You can't get a warrant for that. I, I want you to understand, if you've got probable cause and you say, look, I've got some evidence, I'm not sure yet, I'm not ready to go to trial, but I've got some evidence showing that this guy is doing something wrong, you go to a court and a good judge says that, you know, nine out of ten times, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense, that's your probable cause, go get a warrant and track that son of a bitch, let's find out what he's up to, right? And these are cases where they don't have that evidence. So, and then, one of the reasons that the Constitution didn't allow this is becomes fishing expeditions. Let's put uh, tracking devices on all your cars and see what we come up with, right? And Anna makes the best point. When they started the warrantless wiretapping, which is slightly different than this, but has bled over into this category, it was like, oh my, we gotta do this because Al-Qaeda's so dangerous, Al-Qaeda and terrorists. Now we've totally forgotten that. So we're like, oh yeah, of course, you just do it to anyone you like. The case that the judge makes is that, look, your vehicle is on public property. Uh, and it's out in public. Uh, when you are in public, you do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Uh, as That's a result, nonsense. And what as a, a result, load of crap. It is. So what? Am I, am I supposed to keep my car in my private driveway the whole time? Then what's the point of having the car? The whole point of the car is, of course, it goes out in public. It's on a public road that I paid for, right, with my tax dollars. It's ridiculous. Well, since it's in the public domain, they can put whatever they want on it. They can put a GPS tracking device on it. All right, well then it. how about this? You're in the public domain, you went out to a restaurant, okay, then they could put a GPS, you know, a subtle one, put, uh, put it on the back of your jacket or whatever, and that's it. Oh, that's coming. And stop giving them ideas, please. I mean, the president now has the power to detain someone forever without a warrant, a trial, a hearing, nothing, right? So now this is a trickle-down effect. This is, what, this is what we're seeing. We're becoming a police state across the board. And we have private prisons to fill them up, and we get people, you know, milking the tax dollars. And, you know, it's all done in the name of safety, safety, safety. We have to do it, otherwise there'd be a mushroom cloud. We have to go into Iraq. And this is why I was so vociferous and against, against any kind of law that expands police powers without really limiting it because the intention is usually good in the beginning and then it always gets effed up by bad cops and bad actors. So you gotta be really, really careful. I mean, everything from reporting requirements to uh, tracking devices and vehicles because it's not going to end. And as our technology improves more and more, they're going to intrude more and more into your privacy. Cops, they can't really go onto your property and peep inside your windows, but they can't peep inside your car window. Um, but with technology, I mean, you can peep from anywhere now, right? And we, we got cameras everywhere. So we have to really be careful as, as a society to figure out how much liberty we want to give up for this so-called added security, which I think is complete BS. Where are the Democrats, whether they're at the local level, state level, you know, national level, saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know what, we've gone too far in civil liberties. In fact, as we told you, President Obama asked for further civil liberties abuses, wanted to be able to detain U.S. citizens as well. So Republicans are hopeless, Democrats are hopeless. I also want to mention this other thing, too. Um, so in this Occupy Wall Street movement, the police, they're part of the 99%. Why are they so intent on helping the 1%, right? I mean, they come in there and they kick ass and, 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 and uh, arrest people, and they're very, very diligent in helping the power structure as it is. Well, that's because 
there's different kinds of power. There's economic power, and then there's police power. When it comes to police power, clearly the police are the 1%. So they want to protect that power and, and that position in our society. It's another way of establishing or, or maintaining the establishment and the status quo. So um, we have to kind of be careful how we allow our laws to be created and enforced because um, it's, there's, I mean, there's like that invisible hand that's kind of guiding what's happening and there's a marriage between the economic elite and the, and the physical force elite in maintaining the status quo. Mm -hmm. Right, and lastly on this is that uh, it's also the connection is more obvious as well where they just simply buy the police commissioner as they do in New York, they get him a PR agent, they throw him fancy parties, they give him tens of thousands of dollars in free food and drinks, and then he's the one that gives orders to the police, so it's not surprising that those middle class cops are the ones that turn on the middle class because their boss told them to, because uh, the guy, J.P. Morgan, uh, told him that as he was buying his fur coat. Hey, why don't you sick your cops on uh, the guys who are bothering us? Mm -hmm. I don't think they bought Ray Kelly a fur coat, but they bought him just about everything else.